We will now get to the decoding of the crop circle. circle. In this slide, you see a detailed drawing of the crop circle. Notice the triangle in the center of the drawing. Also, notice the struts going from each corner to the center of the triangle. These struts indicate that the shape is actually a tetrahedron or a three-dimensional shape. Also, notice the three concentric circles superimposed onto the tetrahedron. These circles are to give the impression of a spherical shape. shape. In this next slide, you see on the left what they are trying to indicate. Here you see a tetrahedron and a sphere in a very unusual combination. This type of combination was seen when researchers were studying the secrets of the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. Egypt. It was noticed that the key to being able to construct the pyramid was knowing a certain relationship of a square to a circle, which is the measurement of the perimeter of a square equaling the measurement of the circumference of a circle. That relationship is shown here in this slide. The key to finding this relationship is the mathematical number pi. You see on the right of this is a cube with a sphere superimposed onto it similar to the tetrahedron on the left. The uniqueness of these three-dimensional forms is there is a balance between the spheres the tetrahedron, and the cube. Again, in this slide, notice a small circle at the top of the diagram. Also notice the rod drawn from the inside edge of the circle to the center. It should be obvious here that we are being made aware of the radius of the circle. What is this balanced relationship that would have something to do with the radius of the circle? It is volume. The key to find the size of a sphere with the equal volume of a tetrahedron is the radius of the sphere. To prove this is what they are trying to show us, Gerald figured out mathematically that relationship and drew the results on paper. He was not surprised when he saw that the two shapes with the same volume had the exact same size relationship as theirs. So he was pretty sure he was going in the right direction. We have established that the symbolism here is sacred geometry. In teachings of sacred geometry, there is a progression of 10 shapes shown here in this slide. Five. If you notice, the third shape from the left is a triangle and the fourth is a square. Also notice that the fifth is a pentagram. In Kabbalistic sacred geometry, it is taught that each age or dispensation in time is related to one of these ten symbols. As time goes on in the physical plane, the symbols progress forward, but in the spiritual, it goes backward. We are now spiritually in the fourth symbolism of the square. We are in the dispensation of the Judeo-Christian age. In the last dispensation, we were in the symbolism of the pentagram and were spiritually in the age of the pagans. In Kabbalah, it is taught that a straight line symbolizes time and also male energy and that a circle symbolizes eternity and also female energy. The tetrahedron is made up with lines and is all male energy. The sphere is made up of curves and is all female energy. The symbolism of a tetrahedron with a sphere superimposed on it with the equal volume indicates the balance of male and female energy and also the balancing of time and eternity. Gerald felt at this time that the beings were trying to show that we are about to enter the next dispensation or age symbolized by the tetrahedron and that we are at the cross over point between ages. A few minutes ago, it was said to keep in mind what was said about the cross between ages. It was said that in a metaphorical sense, the etheric realm represented this crossover or balancing. When the being was speaking through Betty and was saying counting three and four was very important, 
Gerald wrote in his book that he felt the being was trying to get our attention to the etheric realm. He wrote that three and four meant the third and fourth dimension. The third dimension being the physical and the fourth the spiritual. That the ether is the doorway to the fourth dimension. If all these assumptions are true, then the rest of the crop circle symbolism should indicate this. this. Looking at this diagram again, notice the small circle at the bottom of the drawing. In this circle, Gerald recognized the spiral shape as a Fibonacci spiral, but it has sort of an unusual ratchet effect in it. In it. The famous Fibonacci spiral is shown here in this slide. Leonardo Fibonacci, a medieval mathematician, noticed a particular order or sequence that plant life utilized to grow and discovered that this particular ratio kept coming up everywhere. The sequence is 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, and so on. This sequence generates a spiral like the one shown. The reason this pattern shows up consistently in life originates in the golden mean spiral, which goes in and out forever, without beginning or end. Life doesn't know how to deal with something that has no beginning because there is nowhere to start. So this sequence, which has become known as the Fibonacci sequence, is life's solution to that problem. The golden mean spiral is shown here in this slide as it was spiritually visualized by ancient sages. It is the path or flow that matter takes which makes up the universe. The bright glow in the center is the fires of creation where the ether is transformed into matter. In the discipline of Kabbalah, it is known about this spiral of the universe, but it is thought of only in a metaphorical sense, similar to the snake swallowing its own tail. Gerald has meditated in this area and has been able to bring the spiral out of the metaphorical stage into the realm of physical science. This next slide shows a drawing of how Gerald visualizes the universe. Ancient sages knew that along with the golden mean spiral, there was a toroidal or donut shape involved. Gerald has put this all together and come up with a view of the universe that puts us a step closer to the true physical reality. You see here in this next slide the spherical shape of the universe as man sees it. Each sphere shown here is the universe in different stages of expansion and contraction as it travels along its spiral path. When the ball first leaves the fires of creation at the center, it is very hot and then cools and expands as it travels along the spiral path. Then it contracts and goes back into the fires to be recreated. Any point in the donut shown and the last slide is a center of a universe. In other words, in the donut, there would appear to be many smaller universes. The limits of light make the universe appear as a localized expanding sphere. But the fact is the observer can only see about 10% of the whole universe. This is the reason why today's scientists are saying that it seems that we are seeing only 10% of the matter in the universe. In this slide, we see the localized universe at different stages embedded in the shell of the toroid of the full universe. At this point, we will get back to the diagram of the crop circle. There. We see the Fibonacci spiral in the bottom circle as ratchets along its path at each quarter of a turn. Gerald wondered about this and recalled the words stressed by the alien through Betty, circling the plane and thought of the Earth's orbit. The orbit of the Earth is a flat plane. Then he thought of the procession of the zodiac, which is as a circling plane. He felt led to draw a circle of the zodiac and superimpose a ratcheted Fibonacci spiral on it. This drawing is shown here in this slide. He noticed that the ratchets all coincided with the four cardinal signs of the zodiac. 
After seeing this, it seemed to all come together in his mind. The golden mean spiral of the universe represents the spiritual plane and the Fibonacci spiral represents the physical plane. In this slide, you see the two spirals superimposed onto each other set in the zodiac. The blue one is the spiritual plane and the red one with a ratchet is the physical plane. It was said earlier that the physical plane of life follows the Fibonacci spiral and cannot follow the spiritual plane following the golden mean spiral. This is shown here in this drawing. Notice how the red spiral advances off and away from the blue one. This ratchet effect in the red spiral is a correcting move or jump made in the physical plane to bring them back together before they get too far apart. If you notice the jump happens every 6,000 years or at each cardinal sign of the zodiac. What the crop circle symbolism is saying is that there is a crossing over to a new age and there is going to be a realignment or correction in the physical plane. If this is true, then 6,000 years ago there had to be a correction and 12,000 years ago also. According to the Bible, the biblical flood happened 6,000 years ago and scientists say that there is evidence that the earth shifted on its axis 12,000 years ago also. It is believed that this is when Atlantis sank. Going back to the diagram of the crop circle, you see on the right there is one more small circle to decode. What you see here is sort of a pinwheel effect. It should be fairly obvious here what they are showing. In this next slide, you see a picture of a spiral galaxy. Notice the resemblance. What they are saying with this symbol is that Earth is coming out of the age of the sun, which had to do with the pyramids, and are entering the galactic age. age. Notice in this slide the tetrahedron on the top and the cube on the bottom. The knowledge of how to sphere a cube led to the construction of the pyramids. This brought us from the pagan age to the Judeo-Christian age. A pyramid like the one at Giza has a triangular shape and has five faces. This gives us the numbers three and five. Now, dividing three into five equals 1.666. The tetrahedron shape, which symbolizes the galactic age, we are entering as a triangular shape and has four faces. Remember counting three and four was so important. If you divide three into four, you get 1.333. We are leaving the physical age of 666 and entering the spiritual age of 333. The age of the sun is the age of explosion and separation ruled by wars and violence. The age of the galaxy is the age of implosion and coming together ruled by peace and harmony. Thank you for attending this presentation.